Hi, I'm Kevin Hines with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation's Wildlife Health Unit. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to remove retropharyngeal lymph nodes from a white-tailed deer for chronic wasting disease testing. This demonstration will be directed towards taxidermists because research has shown that in areas where chronic wasting disease is present, it's more likely to be found in adult male white-tailed deer. And it's these same deer that are more likely to be sent to taxidermists for mounting. As you can see, we have here a uh, white-tailed deer uh, head. It has been caped or skinned, and we have removed the skull plate and antlers. And we're left with the skinned head and partial neck of the deer. This is an excellent time to remove the retropharyngeal lymph nodes from the deer before this is discarded. In addition to a deer head, you'll also need some tools. A sharp knife or scalpel. I prefer a scalpel. Tooth forceps or tweezers to get a grip on the lymph nodes. A clean sample tube. A uh, numbered barcode sticker to go on the sample tube. And the New York State DEC deer kill report form. In addition, at a minimum, you should wear latex gloves and a rubber apron to protect your hands and clothing. Let's get started. First, you'll put the head and neck upside down with the throat facing up. For this uh, procedure, the two retropharyngeal lymph nodes are paired and they're located deep in the throat tissue. We can make an incision here and we can use the uh, angle of the jaw which you can see and feel here, and the larynx or Adam's apple as reference points to make this cut. The larynx is right here, and between the angle of the jaw and the larynx, we're going to make a, a U-shaped cut kind of in front of the larynx and extending back to the angle of each jaw. And you don't have to worry about going too deep because these lymph nodes are in there quite a ways. We'll pull back the uh, trachea and larynx, and this will be the region where the retropharyngeal lymph nodes are found. Now, the retropharyngeal lymph nodes, uh, the, the normal color uh, can be anywhere from light to dark gray to tan, sometimes dark pink or even dark red, depending on if the animal's been frozen or thawed a couple of times. Here you can see one of them. We got lucky it popped up right here. They're also much firmer than the surrounding tissue. So if you don't see them right away, you can dig your fingers in here and feel around for them, and you'll be able to feel that they're firmer than the surrounding tissue, and you'll be able to pull them forward. Once you locate the retropharyngeal lymph node, grasp it with your tooth forceps and kind of pull it forward. Using the forceps gives you a better grip on the lymph node because they're pretty slippery, but more importantly, it keeps your fingertips away from your scalpel or knife. Pull it forward a little bit, and then just cut it away from the surrounding tissue. This is the retropharyngeal lymph node from a white-tailed deer. If you've cut through the lymph node, uh, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. You can just uh, collect both pieces and uh, put them in the sample tube. So next, we place it in the sample tube, being careful not to contaminate the outside of the tube. And we do the same thing for the remaining lymph node. We can see it right here. Pull it forward, just kind of cut around it. Beautiful. Place that in the sample tube as well. Now this tissue on either side of where the lymph nodes were, kind of lumpy tissue, this is salivary gland. And this is not suitable for chronic wasting disease testing. You do not want to submit this in place of the lymph nodes. It has a rough appearance and it feels lumpy uh, when you rub your finger over it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's fairly simple. You want to remove your gloves.
tightly cap the sample vial. Attach a numbered barcode to the side of the vial. And attach the same numbered barcode in the appropriate spot on the back of the deer kill report. Then you want to complete this report uh, as accurately as possible. We need the carcass tag dock number, the county of kill, the town of kill, and the hunter's name and phone number. All of the information that we ask for on this card is very important for our database. We'd like it to be as complete as possible. The sample tube with the barcode label, the completed deer kill report with the matching barcode label, and the remaining barcode labels can be placed in a Ziploc bag and stored in the refrigerator until pickup. After you've done this a number of times, two or three times, it becomes very easy and you should be able to accomplish this task in one to two minutes. Now this material is ready to be discarded. But I'd like to remind you that all taxidermy waste in New York State needs to be deposited in a municipal landfill or an incinerator. Do not place it out on the landscape. If you were to take this deer head that may have been contaminated with chronic wasting disease and you put it in the field out back for the coyotes and the crows to eat, you're not only contaminating your field right behind your shop, but you're also contaminating two to 10 miles distant with coyote or crow feces. I hope you found this demonstration useful. And on behalf of New York State DEC Wildlife Health Unit, I'd like to thank you for your cooperation in helping us keep chronic wasting disease out of our wild deer herd.